In this video, we will cover part one of protecting against unplanned information disclosure. We will discuss displaying of errors, error handling, and error reporting and logging. In part two, we will examine exception handling and improving code efficiency. Let's now look at a block of code which is full of errors. We are going to then simulate turning on the PHP INI parameter display errors. The file name is protect vulnerability display errors.php. Let's go over to the demo website and have a look at the result. As you can see, we have notices, warnings, and then finally a fatal error. In a very simple technique, we will simply turn the display of errors off. This is accomplished by running INI set, giving the PHP INI parameter display errors, and setting it to off or zero. We save the file, move back to the browser, refresh, and as you can see, the errors are no longer displayed. Please remember, however, that errors, warnings, and notices are there for a reason. It's very important that you address every single notice, warning, and error. So, although the error display has been suppressed, the errors still exist. We are now looking at a file protect vulnerability error handling if.php. This is one good example of how you can address notices and warnings. First of all, make sure that you initialize all variables before you use them. Another possibility is to use the if statement or what is called the ternary operator to check to see if values are set before attempting to use them. In this case on line 15, we're testing to see if the URL parameter name has been set. This uses the ternary operator. We first check to see if it's set. If so, after the question mark, we have the value which is obtained if it's set. Notice we are also using strip tags to filter the results. If the value is not set, we have a colon followed by a default value, in this case, guessed. Here's another example. Instead of testing the value, we first test to see if it's set. If it's set, we can then verify its value. Notice that both of these operations are in the same if statement. However, the way PHP works is if the first condition fails, the second condition is not executed. Another example is to check the data type. In this case, we're checking to see if it is an array. The reason for this is that the for each command will generate a warning if the value supplied is not an array. Let's now go to the demo website and see the result of this block of code using if statements. As you can see, even though the display of errors is still on, we have managed to handle the errors using the appropriate if statements. You'll also notice that we did not specifically address the fact that there is a function which is not defined. This is a fatal error. Fatal errors need to be addressed immediately. Let's have a look at another possible technique. In this case, the file name is protect vulnerability error handling custom.php. What we've done is to define a custom error handler. Notice the default argument, which are supplied automatically by PHP in the case of an error. We have the error number, the error string, the error file, and the error line. We then run the error number through a switch statement and test against certain predefined constants which start with E underscore. You'll notice the ones warning, notice, and error. You'll notice, however, that E error is a fatal error, and in most situations it will never reach this particular block of code. We then make use of a command called debug print backtrace, which will give us a history leading up into the error, which may assist you for diagnostic purposes. We then need to make this the default error handler. That is accomplished by running the command set error handler and giving the name of the function that we just defined. Let's go ahead and run the block of code and see the result. Looking at this file, protect vulnerability error handling custom.php, you can see that our custom error handler is now in effect. The errors are clearly displayed. We also have the line number and the file name, and we have the debug backtrace printed. Now, as you have without a doubt concluded, it's not a good idea to show these errors on screen. We could, of course, suppress the display of errors. 
However, it is probably more appropriate to log the errors so that we have some way of finding out exactly which errors occurred. The technique for this is quite simple. We take the previous file and make a couple minor modifications. Before echoing the error information, we open up output buffering. We then retrieve the contents of the buffer using obgetclean and then supply that as an argument to the error log command, which will then log this information into the PHP error log. We can then suppress the display of errors, knowing that if an error is generated, although it will not be displayed, we will have some way of finding out which error occurred. It's also important to set the error reporting to the highest possible level. One technique is simply to use minus one, which sets all error flags on. Let's now take a look at the result. As you can see, we're running the program protect vulnerability error reporting.php. There are no values displayed. There are also no errors. Let's now have a look at the error log. To do this, we will move over to the XAMP control panel. Next to Apache, we go to logs. We are specifically looking for the PHP error log. After resizing the display window, let's move down to the bottom of the file. You will now see the custom generated error messages which came from our custom error handler. Except in this case, instead of appearing on screen, they appear in the error log. This concludes part one of protecting against unplanned information disclosure.